20 to 30 footers just on our head, one after another, after another, after another 45 minutes. And that whole time, there was no surfers out there. There was hundreds of people on the rocks, photographers everywhere. Earlier this year, you were out on just an insane day at Wedding Cake Island. So give me a bit of a rundown about how you ended up in the car park and like, was it all planned or was it a last minute call or what happened there? Yeah, it was semi a last minute call. I'd, I'd done a, a not so big session at Wedding Cake before, so sort of knew the swell it needed, you know, got on the phone to a few people that know all the spots around. Um, Tim Benython's always a good one. He knows a bit about everywhere. Um, so we we're even either tossing up between Wedding Cake and Dead Man's. Um, and it just so happened to be that a guy named Kalani, Brazilian body, big wave body surfer, he messaged me a couple of days before it saying that um, he was going to be in Melbourne. I said, mate, Melbourne, there's no way. <laughs> um, and he was going to be there at Urban Surf. So I said, look, when, you, when you're done there, catch a plane up to Sydney. I think we might have some swell coming. And he just so happened to book a hotel in Coogee. Didn't even tell him where we were going to be surfing. Right. Um, so anyway, called him the day before and I was like, mate, we're pretty on. We're either going to be going to Manly or staying in Coogee. Um, but I'm thinking we're probably going to be at Coogee. Woke up in the morning. The charts were way bigger than what we expected. Um dead south swell so um yeah went to could i was like mate just walk down walk <laughs> walk down from your hotel room and i'm sure you'll see it uh went down there we took a mate with me uga um he was not getting in the water he thought it'd be safer to fly the drone but yeah pretty much pulled up um walked out to the headlands and there's just these monster, monster, monster waves. I have a good mate, Peter Sperling. He's a body surfer too, and he lives on the headlands there. He's lived there for 30 years, and he said, I've never seen a swell that big there. Um, so that just goes to show how once in a lifetime of a swell it was. So we're, I was frothing. Kalani showed up. Tim Benitham was there. We were all kind of like, do we get in the water now? There's no one in there. Um so we jumped in, we suited up, we didn't just jump in there. It was pretty much impossible. Like if, if you want, there's a jump off there, but it's, it was pretty tough to get in there. Um, we still did it. Kalani lost a lot of bark getting in. Um, I, I think I've got a photo actually. It's, it's us just rocked off. The, the rocks are probably five, 10 meters behind us. And there's just this, 12 foot wall of water just about to break on our head and we duck under it breaks right on our head um we duck under it yeah i got a like a photo of just my fins up in the air um just trying to dive as deep as i can before this wave hits us because if if we had got caught on that and if you have a board as well like you're gone in that situation but luckily no piece of foam means that you can get pretty far under the water so got under it and if you've been to wedding, seen wedding cake before, it's a fair way out. So us not really thinking of the swell direction or anything, not really planning on swimming out or not really even seeing anyone swim out because no one was out there at this point. There was no jet skis out there, no surfers out there. It was just me and Kalani thinking that we could just swim out there and take on this beast. <laughs> um, and so we just swam sort of directly to wedding cake we thought that it would be all, all, all right but because of the big south swell it's kind of pushed us on the inside of the waves before we actually got to the peak of the waves so mate we were swimming for like 45 minutes and it was just those like 30 footers just 20 to 30 footers just on our head one after another after another after another 45 minutes um, and that whole time there was no surfers out there. There was hundreds of people on the rocks, um, photographers everywhere. Uh, but all the guys were launched. There's nowhere to really launch your jet skis around there. So you got to either launch them. Like I know some of the boys were like their lifeguards at Maroubra. So they were launching it 
on the beach at Maroubra. Otherwise, it's in like near where the shipping containers come in, La Perouse Way. Oh, yeah, yeah. Botany. Yeah. Uh, um, so they were a fair way away. So we were just hoping that they'd turn up soon and we'd maybe hitch a jet ski lift out to the peak because we were just copping wave after wave after wave on the head. Was uh, it the waves pushing you or was it the rip and everything? You nah, just couldn't, so couldn't get out there. What it was was when we got in, so wedding cakes out here, we've rocked off here and we've just sort of tried to swim straight across. We should have swum out and let the southerly swell push us to the yeah. peak. Um, but we've just tried to go directly across, take the easy route. Uh, and we've gotten pretty much tried to swim out there and the Sudleys pushed us on the inside of the wave and then we're just stuck. Just no hope of getting out there. After 45 minutes, I said to Kalani, mate, I'm going to swim in to Coogee, which is probably a kilometre swim in, maybe, um, maybe a bit more. Um, and in 10 foot of swell as well, you got to, watch out that you know that that current doesn't pull you onto the rocks or anything like that or on the inside there's lots of little uh there's the bit called the southerly which is just on the inside of the uh of wedding cake you got to make sure you don't get caught on the inside of that as well swimming in so i started to swim in kalani decided to stay out there for a bit longer and try and get to swim out to the peak but by the time i got into kuji i could see kalani started to swim back into the beach as well so I did the run around, jumped in. Um, by this time, no, there was still no jet skis showed up, but there was a couple of people in the water surfing. And instead of trying to swim directly to the to wedding cake, we'd learnt from our mistakes and decided to swim sort of out to sea and let the current, let the swell take us across. Um, to the peak and got out there and I think I was out there for probably maybe two minutes and this one just formed up in front of me um, and as I said before like body surfing you like to have a real sucky wave and not fat waves these are fat waves so they're real hard to get into you got to be there's pretty much maybe a meter um, you've got a meter of distance that is the perfect spot to be in and if you're not in that meter you're in the wrong spot and you're not getting into the wave or you, you're either not getting into the wave because you're too far out or getting thrown over over the lip because you're too far in so i just happened to be in that little which was a complete fluke it was breaking here there and everywhere so it was just right place right time and turned around took about three strokes and got into this thing and the way I can explain it is just like being on uh, just a bouncing balloon, pretty much just a 30 foot bouncing balloon that's horizontal and you're just bouncing all the way down it. You're not really <laughs> connected with the face for that long. You're just bouncing, and bouncing and bouncing until you get to the bottom and um you you're trying to catch a rail to go across the way but you can't because you're just bouncing off the face so it's uh just bounced all the way down the face and then tried to once i got to the bottom tried to cut across but as i said like in body surfing you can't really there's no such thing as a hard bottom turn once you're in the flats like that you can't grab a rail hard enough so um i've just had tons of whitewash behind me and decided that's sort of the end of my ride and it probably it felt like forever that I was on that wave for um, just bouncing down that face but it was probably maybe a, a five second just glory down the face this 30 <laughs> second 30 foot face um, so dropping you know 30 foot in you know five seconds it's it's pretty you know exciting stuff uh, but I wouldn't say that's like it's not that fun of a wave to body surf. It was more the challenge for me of swimming all the way out there, um, swam for 45 minutes, knew that I wouldn't be able to get out to the peak, swam in. I, like, I would have swam anywhere between 5 and 10 k's that session yeah. with, with swimming, swimming out there, swimming in, swimming back out there, you know, swimming back in, trying to, stay out there trying to get to the peak um so it was more just the challenge for myself to actually be in that little 
one meter um, area that you can actually catch a wave and being able to slide down that face was just the just the reward really so you hit the bullseye a bit there was yeah it well worth it well worth it yeah yeah like i've definitely surfed better waves but for body surfing as such but just the challenge and um knowing that you know it's a once in a 30 year swell like like i probably won't be as fit and as able as i am now next time that swell comes through there so had to take make the most of it uh when it came through and um hopefully it's a story to tell for many years to come hopefully when i have kids um Tell, telling the good old days when <laughs> wedding cake was pumping. Um, so for me, that's really, it's just the challenge and um, being able to prove to myself what I can really do in the water and having all my training pay off and stuff like that. Yeah. i got heaps I want to know about this, but uh, is there, first off, a world record for body surf wave size? I don't know. Hey, um, yeah, I'm not too sure. I'd have to look into that. Yeah, because um, these were huge. Yeah, yeah, they were, they were, you're in. yeah, they were big. They were big waves. Um, I'd have to look into. That. I know there's surf. There, there's one for surfing. I'm not even sure if there's one for bodyboarding. I know. Yeah, there's I don't one, know. Yeah. There's one for skimboarding, and skimboarding's kind of like a similar sport to body surfing. So you'd think like a similar level sport to body surfing. So I don't know. Something to look. We're gonna into. find out. We're gonna find out for sure. But <laughs> I got heaps of questions about that. So you've got off the rocks. You got out the back. Well, you, sorry, you didn't get out the back the first time, but you're getting slammed by set after set. So are you wearing goggles? No, no. What's it like? you got this giant set coming at you. I don't even know how big the whitewash would be. There's some insane footage, which I'll put on of it, but diving under, you got your, I'm assuming you're opening your eyes to have a look. Yeah. What's that experience like going down straight under a wave that size? I imagine it's just dark. It's pitch black. It's pitch black. And with most reef spots, you're, hands are out in front because you know that the bottom's close by wedding cake the bottom's 15 feet deep plus um in some areas it's you know 20 meters deep so you don't really know you you, you're just swimming down 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 as deep as you can because you know you're not going to hit the bottom and you know that if you that's the pleasure of body surfing as well you can just dive deep and get away from get away from it but that's also where your training comes into it just to remain calm and um that's the free diving side like that they they weren't if you dive deep enough they weren't really ferocious um breath holds because all the energy is at the top of the water um so that's where the free diving side came into it was just being able to slow your breathing down and you know knowing those breathing techniques because you've got by the time you dive all the way down and then pop back up after a wave, there's another wave on your head. You've probably got a couple of seconds to slow your breathing down, use those breathing techniques, know that everything's going to be all right, trust in your training, and then, you, and then you're back under again to do it all again. Um, and it was like that for 45 minutes straight. And I'm glad I didn't have my hand plane on at that time because that would have just been an extra thing to worry about. If Kalani had this big hand plane this big that's about this thick that's full of flotation so he wouldn't have been able to dive as deep as me and that was probably why he was stuck a back bit on the inside because he he couldn't dive as deep so he was getting feeling all that energy but there was definitely a couple that I popped up and they were pretty much breaking on my head so I didn't get the chance to dive pretty real deep and they were the ferocious you know just the the lip landing pretty much on your on your back you well it feels like on your back you're probably a meter or so under the water but it feels like it's just landing on your back and um the, the there because it's a like sort of a deep water wave the energy goes pretty quick um it's sort of it's all ferocious for that one split second and then there's not much uh because it's not like a below sea level wave or anything like that it's not much behind it um so it's that initial uh smashing and then it's pretty calm after that but it's just about having the fitness and the endurance to be able to keep going keep going you know have that set in your mind that i'm going to get out there i'm going to get out there you just got to keep your head down and keep calm and 
you know, stick to your training and you'll eventually get out the back. Yeah. And so when you do, obviously you said that the pro of body surfing is you can dive really deep and miss a lot of that. Yeah. Uh, but I'm imagining the pro of surfing against that is that you got that bit of a life, life preserver almost to the surface. Yeah. How does it feel when you're actually inside and you are getting slammed in, in a wave? You, you haven't made it under, it's just picked you up and thrown you, you know, mm-hmm. as opposed to surfing where you can f- almost feel it. Um, what's that like just having nothing but yourself? Well, the, with, with, with surfing, you can sort of tell where the top is because you've got a leg yeah. rope. You can feel how body surfing, you kind of just got to relax because you don't know how far the top is away. So you're just hoping that you get to the top soon. You don't really know. Um, so it's kind of a scary point sometimes that you could be five meters under the water and you're thinking that you need to breathe two minutes ago. <laughs> like, Yeah. Uh, so you kind of just got to relax. You don't really know where the top is. Um, it is, yeah, going, you know, being, you know, surfing and board surfing and knowing that uh, the top's just there, I can feel that my leg rope's loose. So, um, and I've still got my board on, so the top's just there. I'll know that I get my breath soon or knowing that, okay, my leg rope's tight. I'm a fair way under the water is a great heads up. Um, but yeah, so that's the main downside. And as well as like when you get, when you get done, you can sort of just hop on, lay on your board and know that the whitewash is going to take you in. Yep. Um, you can't really do that on the board. And do you ever get disoriented underwater? Do you know you're heading up like in that size swell? Um, you know, you're heading upwards just cause you're positively buoyant. Yeah. Um, but you don't, really know which way is the shore you don't know which ways um so you just sometimes you pop up and you'll pop up facing shore and you don't know what's coming behind you there could be a you know massive wave about to break on your head um so that's the main disorientating part is not knowing where's out to sea not you really want to pop up out to sea to be able to um know what's coming and be able to adapt to that but um that's the disorientating part of it yeah and especially when it's pitch black down there yeah it's terrifying and then when you're out there you're sitting there you know you're bobbing around like a cork and the water's at this level as opposed to a surfboard that you can sit on what's that kind of view like and you know i guess with a surfboard you can almost see over as you're going up over the waves you can see the next one's coming and know you know i think there's another three or four in this set or whatever can you do that while you're body surfing, just floating in the water, or are you just going one after the other after the other? You just got to keep going. Yeah, you just got to keep going. You can't you can't see what's coming. Um, your water lines at eye level. Um, I normally watch out, watch the surfers, because um, when I see them start paddling hard to the horizon, <laughs> that's when I know that I've got to swim hard to the horizon. Yeah. Um, but that day there was no surfers out there from when for the first probably hour that we were out there. Um, so there was nothing to really go off, but we didn't really need the surfers anyway that day because we were, we were just, we didn't get out to the peak until the surfers were out there. Cause we were just one wave on the head after another, <laughs> after another. So it was just constant swimming that whole time. Really you, the, the only thing that would have been an advantage is if you had a board is, you know, when the big sets are coming, so you can sort of mentally prepare yourself for all right, there's a big wave coming. You wouldn't know that there's a really, like they're all big waves, but you wouldn't know that there's a really, really big one coming until it's pretty much on you. Um, yeah. Which I guess is kind of a good thing as well. Like if, you know, the, if you know that there's a big wave coming, you can sort of, sometimes you're like, maybe, you know, give up a little bit and you're like, stuff this, there's a big wave coming, it's going to, push me back 15 meters I may as well just try and swim in so I guess it's a good thing in some respect as well keeps you keeps you honest and keeps you going yep and so based on that wave that you caught do you think there's a limit I suppose safety related and like just related to yourself a limit to the size of the wave that you can catch body surfing uh I think there is at the moment just because equipment hasn't really been put in place for body surfing like safety equipment as such 
Um, you see the surfers when they're going real big waves, they've got pull to inflate vests and stuff like that. Yep. You can't, an impact vest, you can't really wear that body surfing. It's just going to, well, first of all, you're like swimming out there. It's going to get in the way. And then when you, I've tried to think of like, you know, when you're body surfing, it's like main, when, especially when it's a big wave, it's mainly your back on the wave. So if it's a left hander, maybe having just your right hand um, front, bit you know just a a pull to inflate there so you've just got one there um so it's not going to get in the way when you're on the actual wave it's not going to be un you know hydrodynamic kind of thing um but even i've like sort of chatted to a few people about those ideas and um even just swimming with you know a big flotation thing there is going to be a bit of a a tough go so um yeah I think equipment's got a, at the moment, there's a limit on it. And obviously I'm trying to push those limits, but um, it's going to get to a certain point where equipment's got to evolve a little bit around body surfing to be able to push it any further. Right. Size wise. Yeah. Yeah. And was there ever a point at that, in that day where you thought, I mean, over my head, cause you can't, is that, that's the biggest you've ever body surfed? I'd say, um, is it? Yeah. 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 Size wise, wise, that's probably like, Face wise, that's probably the biggest of body surfed. Um, there, no, nah, there wasn't really. I, I think if you're ever in the water and think this is out of my, you know, sort of range of training and everything like that, you've, you're, you're stuffed from then on. You've always yeah. got to be positive in your mindset and positive that you're trained hard enough. You know, one little, you, you think for one minute that the ocean's got you and it will have you or it'll have you have you gone in a second so you've always got to be positive and um even you know if you if it is big and you are a bit worried you know just sort of rely on your training and everything and all your experience to be positive yep man that's so epic that one i love it 